So, I'm not necessarily gonna lie, I've been waiting around basically for three to almost four days at this point, trying to figure out what video I wanted to do, and I'm not necessarily gonna lie, I had nothing really good planned. I couldn't really find any artists I really want to talk about, didn't necessarily have the story done just yet because the bikini contest is a little bit more work than I thought it was gonna be, even though we now got that part finally, you know, pictures animated and stuff like that, so, you know, we just at the bare minimum of finishing that shit. We did a waifu material video already, so I'm not necessarily too in the mood to do another one of those. So, I was kind of dry for content. I ain't gonna necessarily lie, I was a bit dry. Kind of how I feel about Kingdom Hearts. And honestly, even though I know not many people probably care about me talking about this on the channel, it's the only thing I feel like talking about at this moment in time. Because I'm not necessarily gonna lie, it is on the brain a lot, and it is something that really bothers me with how Square is kind of treating the series a little bit. So, why not talk about it? So, as you know, I am that Kingdom Hearts fan person. We did do a reaction to all the Dark Road episodes, which they got little views, but, but nonetheless, I still enjoy making it. And then also, when Zora got put into Smash, I cried like a bitch. But when it comes out, things, that kind of tells you that, yeah, this guy really likes his damn game and this character, right? So, imagine my surprise when Kingdom Hearts 4 was finally shown, and I was losing my damn mind. I was absolutely excited about it. And then we had, you know, Missing Link to also be announced with that. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to play that, but that's cool, right? We get more story shit. But then as time kind of go on after that event, we ain't got nothing of the game. Hell, not even a mobile Missing Link game, honestly. And to be honest with you, I understand that game development is hard. A lot of games nowadays are getting bigger and more bigger, and it's gonna take a lot more work to kinda, you know, bring shit to the forefront, right? But here's the thing though, you would still have thought that we would have seen something now, right? This is the longest dry season for Kingdom Hearts content. And keep in mind too, I'm a very simple person. When it comes to my games and when it comes to the things I really care about, Kingdom Hearts in the gaming space is by far the top game I am waiting on when it comes to any game that is out there, right? Don't get me wrong, I like Persona, I like me, some other games that is absolutely out there, but nothing tops Kingdom Hearts for me. Personally, I'm just excited to see where the hell it goes and what potentially could be come up from it. And that's essentially all I really want is a Kingdom Hearts game, right? And I don't think there's any other game that's going to replace it even when Kingdom Hearts finally finishes after whatever the point is going to be of finishing the damn story. But with that being said, we really haven't heard anything from Kingdom Hearts in a while now. Like, the last thing we really known was that the closed beta of Missing Link was like a thing, and that's essentially it. And recently, I kind of seen some clips of Missing Link, even though you, you wasn't really supposed to share those, and I didn't share it, but I did see it, because I'm like, I'm starving for content, so I might as well watch this shit on TikTok or something. And that's essentially where I saw the last bit of it, but it wasn't anything interesting, so I can't really even tell you what happened, because nothing really happened in it. It's just what you expect of a Kingdom Hearts gameplay. And so basically, my brain is like, man, I can't wait for you know, more news, we should get something this year, we should get something, and now as the majority of the year has pretty much come and gone, it's kind of like, damn, are we really not going to get anything this year? That's kind of upsetting, I'm not necessarily going to lie, because we do know that they did say that they showed Kingdom Hearts 4 a little bit early, and you know, what happens when they show shit early, shit sometimes be taking way too damn long, and it kind of gets a little bit annoying, honestly. But still nonetheless, it's just like you would expect to have a little bit of information, even if it's a small hint of something, right? You would expect that you would have that, but you don't really get any of that. And it kind of makes me feel like, damn, Square just really have this shit on the back burner and ain't nobody attending to that hoe. Because really Square is more focused on Final Fantasy and again, that's fine, but at the same time, you would think maybe after 16, they would do something with Kingdom Hearts. No, we're going back to another Final Fantasy game. And again, while it's a game that's really highly anticipated, still at the same time, it's like, that's back-to-back -back Final Fantasy. Surely you can send some type of 
Kingdom Hearts news at some point in time. Even if it's just a little bit of a, you know, teaser to an event that happens later on. I would be more than happy just to sit down and wait and be like, Alright, we're getting some this day. Now we're about to get some Kingdom Hearts news. And then, even if it's nothing really too major, I would still at least be excited for that, right? But, it's been basically radio silence. And this is the biggest thing about Kingdom Hearts that kind of sucks as a fan is this downtime and this waiting time when you know you want some the Kingdom Hearts related but you don't really get it because during this downtime it's like the game is technically like dead or it's like there's nothing going on with it and it feels like there's nothing developing even though you know there's something is but it just feels like that's what it is a lot of the bigger Kingdom Hearts YouTubers basically kind of sometimes make Kingdom Hearts content but most of the time they basically don't upload or they just do something else and you're basically just waiting for anything and everything to kind of just come through right as I said before we don't even know what the hell Kingdom Hearts is going to be about unlike Final Fantasy you know 7 where you can have an idea of what something is going to be like because you have the original game you're just going through 90% of the game that is going to be a rehash of what happened before with a hint of something new here, right? That's essentially what you're getting when it comes to Final Fantasy VII. You know what to kind of expect. But when it comes to Kingdom Hearts, this is a different ass thing. This is done with the Xehanort bullshit. Now we're going to a whole different thing and you don't know what really to expect. Again, you don't even know what the party is like. You don't even know if Donald Goofy is going to be there at Quadratum. Hell, you don't even know where Riku is in all of this stuff. He's out there in Quadratum, but we don't know exactly where and what the hell is happening and stuff like that. Hell, are we gonna play him first as the character like that we start out as, maybe, for tutorial? Is it going to be Ozora? Is Starlitzia gonna be our party member? Which I kinda hope so. But we don't necessarily know dick, cock, and or balls about what is going to happen Versus something like Final Fantasy VII that you kind of can predict and kind of can tell what it's going to be like and kind of understand how it's going to go and things like that. Hell, technically, we don't even know what Kingdom Hearts 4 even looks like because they changed the, the Unreal Engine. They changed it from 4 to 5 and we haven't seen Kingdom Hearts 4 in Unreal Engine 4, 5 or 4. There has dead ass been so much mystery that is... 100% in the air when it comes to Kingdom Hearts as a whole and it starts to remind me of how Final Fantasy 16 was when they showed the announcement trailer and then nothing else for two years and then finally they dropped something else for you know the after that and then that's when they started really showing stuff. I feel like they might do a similar type of thing but Honestly, I rather them just not say anything at all and then drop something when they're ready to show off way more of the game. Because now that people are kind of starved for content and starved for, you know, wanting to see what this game is going to be like, now they're probably going to do an approach like they did with Kingdom Hearts 3 and show off a shit ton of everything that kind of happens in the game and basically spoil you a majority of what's going to happen in the game, which was the problem last time, obviously. Because there was moments in the trailers that really should have been saved for your reaction when you played the game the first time. Like Dark Aqua, which will still not get off my actual nerves of, you know, damn, what happened to you type of beat. I ain't gonna say a lot. When I saw it the first time, I was like, no! No! I had to run up to the front room and see my brother at reaction to it. I'm like, did you see that shit? He's like, yeah. I'm like, what the hell? This is a bullshit. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was... That was something that really should have been, you know, not shown. And then you had like some other elements too, right? Roxas return. That really shouldn't have been shown. That should have been something in game that you get to see at that point. But they didn't do that. But then there's also one part of this whole development thing that kind of bothers me. As we know, that there is a lot of games that's out there that is, you know, dealing with a lot of ESG stuff, a lot of things that's trying to put progressivism messaging in their games and things of that sort and for a very big chunk of this you know whole waiting thing i'm kind of wondering are they gonna do something with that freaking hearts because i really don't want that shit honestly it should be just a story of a boy going through all these damn distant worlds and shit basically trying to get back home with the whole light and darkness theme and that's essentially it keep it simple keep it like it always has been 
don't need to improve on it like in that sort of way it don't necessarily need any of that because it's not really an improvement it's a deprovement if i'm being honest and i'm thinking of different ways i'm just like is that even going to happen i can kind of see it happen with one character and let's just hope they don't necessarily do it because they kind of already on that route i'm not necessarily seeing anybody in the main trio of characters that will fall down that path i don't see anybody in the twilight crew that will fall down that path i do see it in the birth by sleep crew and i do see it in aqua 100 percent let me explain with a lot of stuff when it comes to aqua like she's good right she's absolutely good she can throw hands but i hope they give her the recoup path because let's be honest there is no effing way you should be able to just snap back into what you used to be after dealing a dark version of yourself it took riku like what two three games to kind of figure out how to you know get rid of the darkness completely and get back to normal and shit i'm not saying it needs to take that that long but it shouldn't necessarily just be something that oh aqua snaps back into just immediately or it takes one damn game for her to completely snap back into place like no and don't get me wrong she does have friends that will help her tara been in the darkness for a long ass time so obviously he knows how to maybe con you know maybe like avoid some things and you know that's kind of be something for aqua to deal with and stuff and learn and that's completely understandable but i don't necessarily think she should be able to just easily brush off dark aqua like it was nothing because when I look at Aqua as a character, I see her as a character who is strong, can take care of themselves, and basically be independent away from their friends and, you know, be on that type of timing. And again, this all feels too damn close to what we know when it comes to ESG and the progressivism and things like that, the feminist routes of things. Like, Aqua is literally teetering on that edge. And I really hope they push her to back up off that edge, honestly. Because I don't want to see Aqua going down that route. You know, I don't want to see that. Because I'm not going to lie. Sometimes you have friends and they are just only that. Can we just keep it like that? Can we just keep it like that? If you want to do that with certain characters like Sora and Kairi, sure. Maybe Riku or Naminé or maybe Roxas and Naminé. Because they both kind of, you know, are connected in some weird way. So maybe Riku and Roxas got to throw down and fight or something like that. Or, or maybe like Shion and Roxas and damn, does Roxas get all the hoes? But when it comes down to things, basically, you could do certain relationships that would make sense, but really hope they don't try to spin something around or Disney get their hands on it, try to spin Nemora's writing around to do something crazy. I hope they don't happen. But yeah, anyway, the whole point of this video is that this draft season sucks. It's not really good. And I'm hoping we get some damn news soon. Hopefully with TGS, because that's where people keep saying it could happen. But I'm not necessarily sure at this point. I'm starting to have low expectations, but we'll have to see. But yeah, that's essentially what I really want to talk about with this one. Again, Kingdom Hearts is just a game I absolutely love. It is really fine the way it is. But man, does this wait time be, you know, worrying a little bit. And it's just like, damn, I'm just ready to kind of see some. They don't need to show overly too much, but I am ready to see some. But hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, make sure you're else. Also, follow me on the socials and if you'd like to donate to the channel, Patreon is available as well. We're going to be finishing up Toko very soon, so if you want to see that, join the third dollar tier. You know what to do. And until then, it's your boy Jay, signing off. Have a blessed day.